After receiving aid from Queen Helen, Elwood rushes to the sealed shrine. The secret road they follow is known only to the royal family. They burn past burned soldiers unnoticed and unhindered. They approach the castle. They have a brief snack. The screen fades to black. They decide to stop for the day. They... Oh my god, what's going on with the video? I've been waiting... Oh, it's... It's, uh, Lloyd again. Who apparently still wants to kill us. Did nobody really tell him that... Oh, then again. Technically, the leader of the Fangs is dead. His brother's dead. The other members of the Fangs are gone or dead. Um, we have killed a lot of his fellow units, and he doesn't know that he was being manipulated by Sonya, so yeah, he would be pretty pissed. Now, he's actually a really dangerous unit to fight, truth be told. So, this is definitely going to be an interesting one. Here we go. A couple of Myrmidons, very frightening, uh, very frightening figures. Now, Nino wants to talk to them, thinking they might be able to be reasoned with, but, uh... Jafar is a decent point, they never really liked them, so that won't work. And Nina wants to talk to Lloyd, she thinks that they'll be able to help. Oh, here we go. Merlinus has a wagon, hooray. <laughs> Class change from tent to his final form of wagon. God damn it, Merlinus. <laughs> oh, and what a class change it is. It is actually fairly helpful. Merlinus can now move, which means that you can get him away from dangerous situations. Now, this is a bit of a weird map, as the unit spawns on this map. Well, first off, take note. He has a light brand and an iron rune. He has no- you have no crit chance against him, and he has a 31% base crit chance. Your best chance against him, given the fact that he's using the Light Brand, is going to be to use Animal Magic against him, so if Nino has been trained up sufficiently, she'll actually probably be the best choice for fighting her brother. Now, if you look through the items here, we got a couple of things that we could steal. We've got an elixir, we got a gem, mine, antitoxin... Oh, Killing Edge, where is he? I need to watch out for that guy. But overall, there really isn't too much to be scared of. There's a guiding ring here if you still need one, but you should be absolutely swimming in guiding rings by now, so you probably won't. If you want, you can send Florina over here or some other flying unit, as so long as they have the Delphi shield to protect them from those ballista. In fact, that reminds me, Florina needs a new weapon, and then who am I bringing with me for this level? I can bring just about everyone. Oh, but wait a second, Matthew needs to get an item here. Uh, let's put away all those items and then get him that fell contract wherever it went. Let's check the list. Come on. There it is. All right, and use. Time for our trusty thief to finally get a class change. Matthew, now an assassin. No skill or speed when he classes up, but he gets some extra strength, defense, resistance, and HP. And the ability to use Silencer if he ever actually gets it. Plus, due to the fact that he has a heavy support with Oswin, he's actually going to be fairly dangerous if we bring Oswin along, which is what I think I'm going to be doing. Choosing to leave... Honestly, probably Kanas behind. He can afford to stay behind just a little bit. But who needs these speed wings? Let's, um... Can I check my units for that? Uh, anyone have extremely low speed? Damn, just about everyone is pretty high on speed, actually. I think I'm going to give it to Dart, though. And I think I'm actually going to be leaving Sarah behind on this level. Instead of Kanas because it's alright to have a light magic user, but we're going to get a better one later in the game, and really the only one we're, we'll ever need later in the game, so... It's just a matter of... The fact that she really isn't useful, we did class her up because she did get up to level, but... 
one, even after she got to the proper level, there still really wasn't enough to make her a decent unit. I'm go I am going to give Flurry a Steel Lance as well as that sword, just so we can ma she can make absolutely sure she's good with that. Deposit the men's staff and sell the nearly broken Fire Tome. Grab him another L Fire Tome. And a Physics Staff. Wait, are they rank B? Ah, son of a bitch. Well, Recover, there we go. Practicing with the Recover Staff for Kanas and Urk is going to be the best thing they can do right now. Because apparently I had the rank for that item off by one. Priscilla's gonna need a new staff in the meantime. And she's going to need an Elfire Tome once she's actually able to use it, but that's probably going to come this level. In the meantime, Ninian can take that ring that we stole in the last chapter. Where is it? Thor's Ire, there we go. Extra crit chance, which is completely useless against this chapter's boss, so... Functionally worthless. Um, what rank is the Hammerny Staff? Can one of them use that? To help repair something? Oh, it is Staff C. Good. So I can use that to repair Rebecca's longbow, which is going to be quite helpful. And everyone else. Hector still has enough uses on his sword to be alright. Sarah is going to be left behind, so she doesn't need any additional things. Raven has some good items. Guy could probably use a different iron sword. There we go. And I think that should make us just about good to go. Maybe give Matthew a regular steel sword as well. We're starting to actually run out of swords with all the people we have using them. Oh well, pick unit. Oswin. Instead of... Not Guy. Dang it. Guy's coming along. Sarah is not. Oswin is level 6 general. Finally in line with everyone else on our team. And still the most defensive. 25 defense. Absolutely ridiculous. And, truth be told, if I actually get rid of Oswin's items for now, I can give them back to him when it gets later. But first... Well, first off, let's give Nino another tome. And a fire tome, for that matter, just in case. And the guiding ring. Because she's probably going to hit level 20 during this level. Now, we'll save. We'll actually trade all of Oswin's items off of him for now, at least all of his weapons. He can always pick them up from Merlinus later, but for the moment, he'll just be sitting up here, right next to Nino, tanking up these Cavaliers and pretty much anyone else that tries to cross this bridge. It's actually going to be quite helpful for him. We've got a couple of knights over here, but that's definitely going to be Hector's job to take care of them. Now, the thing about this level is you have to be exceptionally careful with where you move because enemy respawns are determined whenever you cross certain lines. When you cross a line, I think there's one at this bridge, one right up here, one over here by this bridge. Whenever you cross one of these lines, enemies will spawn in sets of three at these forts for three consecutive turns, which means that it's going to be fairly difficult to get over to the over there to that village in time, if you're being even sort of careful about all of this, but if you really don't care as much about um, that village, it should be a little bit easier to take it slow and safe. I'm actually going to trade Jafar's Killing Edge to the transfer, as well as his elixir for that matter, and... Uh, hmm. I think I'm going to finally give someone that pair of boots, but who? I did mention that Ninian would be a good choice as it would allow her to move significantly further. In fact, that's what I think I'm going to do. The more that she can move, the more people she can allow to move again, and the more she can keep up with everyone. Plus, now if she gets in trouble she can just run away, she has as much movement as a horse now, so... There you go. And with that, let's start the level. We are going to deploy Merlinus, but now it's not going to be nearly as scary. Alright, now we do have these couple of Cavaliers up there. We also have the Knights over to the side. We're going to want Hector to go kill the Knights. So he's going to just need an Iron Axe for that. Oswin can just sit on that bridge for now. Nino's going to be over there with him. And most of our team we're actually going to keep fairly out of the way, fairly safe. 
but Florina we're going to be sending right into the lion's den. She's going to be flying straight past most of the enemy team entirely, just to get to that village in time. This will cause a lot of units to spawn, but so long as we have a fairly defensive front line, we should be able to hold them off fairly well. Level up for Florina, good. Speed, luck, resistance, HP, all nice, but we could really use some strength. But she does finally get to weapon level C, D. She wasn't even weapon level D with swords yet? Holy crap. Pull together, Florina. Alright, so Priscilla is going to be easily able to take out this Black Fang member with Thunder. She'll probably hit L5 within this stage, but it doesn't even look like she needs it at this point. There we go. Kanas will go ahead and cast Flux, since Luna would be a bit of a waste. And the enemy's resistance is actually lower than the attack power of Flux, so... It's better to use it than Luna in this case, since he's already getting crits anyway. Raven can sit nearby, he's got his axe equipped, so he should be alright there. Urk will go with Priscilla. And I'll move Nidian up near Mino. There we go. Might as well dance as there is little else for her to do. She's nearly maxed out on level, so we won't have to do those little superfluous dances anymore. I'm going to have Dart sit near the river so he can cross for emergency support if necessary. And then I'm actually going to have a couple of units wait back here, Lynn among them, as well as Rebecca, Guy, and Elwood. They're all going to wait at the start of the map. Um, oh, I forgot to have someone heal Rebecca's longbow. That sucks. Oh well, Lynn will trade the... wait. Can Lynn use the steel bow? She can, good. Okay, so Lynn will take the steel bow from Rebecca. Rebecca now has a killer bow and a longbow. That's actually pretty... I can move Merlinus over here though, because presumably he has some extra items for her. Oh yeah, an iron bow, there we go. More than sufficient for Rebecca's purposes. And we're going to have all of them wait there. And for now, for the first turn, we're just going to defend, since this is a very enemy heavy level. So we are going to need to focus quite a bit on our defense. But, Silver Lance is no match for Iron Axe when it's wielded by Hector as he takes no damage whatsoever and dishes out the pain to his opponents and gets another level up while he's at it. Extra strength and defense because he was not doing well enough before. Always nice to see. Now, you can actually send Hector or Oswin up against the boss here and they would do alright. The fact that the boss does magic damage is really the biggest detriment to it, but I don't know if the light brand still does magical damage when they're at range, or if it's just physical in that case. That would definitely be something for me to look up here. There we go, so we've got a bunch of knights moving in on Hector's position, one with a javelin, that's fine, we can deal with the javelin knight. And lots of cavaliers moving out, in fact, a lot of everything moving out, really. Nomads included, and the nomads actually are a little bit scary. And it appears I've crossed two spawning lines, because knights and generals, heroes, mercenaries, and myrmidons are all spawning. Oh my. This is going to be a hell of a fight. And a lot of experience for Hector, since I'm just going to have him take up most of the knights up here on his own. I could have him use a sword to try to get his weapon level up with that, but what does this general have? A sword slayer! Okay, yeah, no, I'm just going to go ahead and equip an axe, because, oh god, a sword slayer, that would have been really bad if I'd kept Hector with a sword. So, he's going to just use an iron axe, and that should allow him to just beat the hell out of that knight. Javelin or no javelin. Now, we do have a couple of archers in the ballista off to the left, they're probably going to be attacking Florina after she moves this turn. We aren't actually going to worry about them too much. We can just fly her into the mountains. They'll both attack. They might hit, but they won't do bonus damage, and that's really what we were most worried about, was that bonus damage. Matthew should actually probably hang out near Oswin more than anything else, seeing as that would be the most beneficial for him. There we go. We can move Oswin there and Nino here. Cool. And now... 
I think the archers are going to attack Nino if they can, but I don't think they'll be able to. So, one more defensive turn. Enemies are just going to keep spawning and charging at us, which is going to make things considerably easier. If we can just get all these massive amounts of enemies grouped up at choke points, it's going to be that much simpler for us to kill them. It seems an Iron Axe is finally insufficient to kill something when that something is never mind, it's a critical hit, there we go, it's perfectly sufficient. Hector proving me wrong and getting a level up while he's at it. Extra strength in defense, since he did not have enough yet. You know, I honestly would not be surprised if Hector maxed out on strength and defense this playthrough. How have I not used him as a unit more before? I mean, normally I just treated him as one of the lords, something to be protected and not really worried about past that. Oswin is going to be poisoned, so that sucks, but... He'll be the one to have the last laugh when he's counter-attacking and just taking care of everyone. Now, with this many units in the area, I do think I'm going to give Hector a, criti a uh, killer axe this turn. Enemy Ballista misses Florina, and misses Florina. Good, so no damage whatsoever, despite both the Ballistas taking shots. I think those are killer Ballistas, so they are fairly dangerous. But, that's only if they can actually land a hit. And, as you can see, the Black Fang members are completely unable to harm Oswin. Uh, it's safe for the Poison Lance, obviously, that's going to deal damage over time to him, but that's the only damage he's going to be dealt. And it seems I've crossed the third spawning line, and now everything is coming for me. Good. Bring him on. There's a critical from Hector, and I anticipate many more with that Killer Axe on this next turn. I should have killed the guy with the Javelin in hindsight, but oh well. Now, I do want to get Kanas out into the main part of the fight, since he is going to be... Oh, he was the one with the Hammerny Staff. Fair enough. He is actually going to be the one I'm relying on to help Hector out when these sword users start rolling in. But we really do just want to be careful for now and continue holding up our defense. Hellfire, too heavy to attack twice. Fire... Oh, dear. Thundertone? Um... Okay, here we go. So if I trade the Thunder Tome to Matthew, and wait, Nino can trade the Thunder Tome from Matthew for an Elfire. Attack with Thunder just fast enough to attack twice. Good. That's more like it. Nino getting double attacks, then I can use Ninian to give her an extra turn, except I can't because she's on the bridge. I am not a clever man. Level 14 for Nino now, though. 19 speed, good. I mean, that's actually a really terrible level up for Nino, but 19 speed in general is just excellent. Especially considering she was just not fast enough to attack a moment ago. I actually think I'm going to be sending Guy up against a lot of these sword users in the near future here as well, so he's going to be moving out. Dart, I don't have a sword reaver or anything of that sort, so he's going to be staying behind. Lynn, I can send versus them though, and Dart can actually take her place back here. And then, naturally, Merlin's can just chill out nearby. Now, Florina can almost reach that village. Not quite. One more turn. And we do have a Mermit on there, so might as well put her within his range and take him out this turn. And this way, she will be well out of the range. Or, she will be to the village well before any bandit can possibly get there. And it'll be that much easier for us to get the item. And Oswin's just going to go ahead and... No, he's going to stay where he is, actually. The Nomads will move first, so it's going to be impossible for... Nino to counterattack them this turn, which is kind of a pity, but not entirely unexpected. Hector will take out just about every enemy here and get a considerable amount of levels. He'll be a... very... Very powerful Great Lord after this level, come to think of it, with looking at all the units that are coming by. He's got all those knights, he's got the cavalry, he's got the... You know, come to think of it, I probably should just have Hector back up and act as a tank for all of this. Oh, that unit has a Lance Reaver, which means absolutely nothing to Kanas. Since magic does not care about the weapon triangle. 
I mean, he is just another beast unit that we have. I just cannot anticipate anything taking that. Whoa, wait a minute, what? Okay, with the lance, I can sort of see twirling a lance as your thing, but how in the hell do you twirl a sword? You've got to hold the hilt. There's no... It's not physically, you know... Forget it. I'm worrying about logic in the realm of magic again. No, jeez. So, Kanas is going to go ahead and attack this Lance Reaver user here. There are a lot of Lance Reavers there, actually. Kind of glad I didn't have Florina fight them. Okay, yeah, I think it's about time for Hector to start backing up and tanking. Because, holy crap, look at that. Plus, I think I can have Nino... Or at the very least, I can have Nino and Matthew take out most of these units this turn. In fact, I think if Hector trades away his items to Merlinus on this next turn, he and Oswin can form what would very well be an impenetrable wall, considering they have 24 and 25 defense respectively. Hector has a bit more strength though, but then again he's also a couple levels up on Oswin, so we'll see how they match up when they're the same level. The only things that I could really see having any chance of hurting Nino in this little group here are going to be... Oh, wait, you're firing at Priscilla? Really? I guess you can do more damage to her than Florina. Alright, miss on Hector. Good, good. Yeah, Oswin's got to move out this turn if I'm going to make that wall. Because there's really no other way for me to make that wall without him here. That is to say, him there. So, this little path to the right is just going to be Nino's for the turn. But after that, she's going to have to move over there. Because I want Nino to get most of the ex experience from the massive group of enemies just sitting there. Oh, a longbow. Does he give that to me after he dies? I'm hoping. More heroes, more generals. As you can see, the enemies are absolutely merciless with spawning. They spawn every other turn for three or four turns, something like that. So you're about to get a bunch of enemies coming your way when this sort of thing starts happening. Um... Hmm. Hector can't really trade away his items here. At least not without putting Merlinus at considerable risk. Well, at worst, one enemy, enemy would be able to attack Merlinus, and truth be told, I actually think he could survive that. So let me go ahead and give him all of Hector's weapons. Just sit there with nothing. Oswin's going to begin moving back. And then just dance for him with Ninian. And he should be able to get over there to the fight. I kind of wish I had a restore staff for him, since he's going to have to be attempting to tank while poisoned, and that's never too good, but... I sold my Restore Staff like a doof, so... Level 17 for Ninian. Lots of speed and luck, so her dodge is going to be absolutely ludicrous. He's got his Vulnerary if things start to go south, and Nino has more than enough power to kill this Black Fang unit. Especially with her extra speed, she might have even been able to use Elfire there, but using a Thunder Tome is probably a better idea regardless. I can't forget to move Florina this turn, though. That will be extremely helpful for her. Matthew finally gets to attack for his first time, and he does not even have an 100% chance to hit as an assassin. That's pretty pitiful, Matthew. Jafar had way more skill than this man. 50 experience just for a single kill, though, that's pretty nice. Also, I can send Urk out to finish off the other unit here. Easily at that. Damn, 28 damage once. Then again, he is an extremely high level Sage at this point. Nearly a level higher, but not quite. Yeah, level 9 Sage, damn. Okay, and I need to get Kanas and Priscilla the hell out of there just so I don't accidentally draw enemies through that little side path, because if I do, we're in some trouble. I could have her use a heal staff on Oswin. I think I'm going to, simply because she could definitely use that. Well, that is to say, she could use the experience, he could use the healing. Now, let's go ahead and visit this village. Oh, it's Murdoch. Take this staff, thank you for Prince Zephyr. 
Warp Staff. Oh, actually, this is fairly useful. It's a reverse rescue staff. A unit right next to you can be sent to another space a long distance away. So if you need someone to get somewhere pretty quickly, say to a village or something like that, and they're extremely defensive, you can just send them there and have them hold out until the rest of your team arrives. So fairly handy. Now we are about to have a hell of a fight coming up here. I have no idea why all those units are moving to the southwest though. Florina's over there, yeah, but they can't really do much to her. There we go, Hector has a chance to take one damage, oh no. And he does so. But now, no unit can attack Merlinus this turn unless it's the dude with the longbow. But dude with the longbow is probably going to attack him anyway because he's kind of a dick. Okay, Oswin gets a miss from the guy with the javelin. And Ballista Man just cannot land a shot, always good to see. He's got a javelin, but he's forced to attack at point-blank range, because everyone else is already grouped up around these two. And more paladins and nomads and everything are going to spawn this turn, aren't they? And wait, what the hell? Is he standing on the river? He can do that? Oh, dude with the longbow is actually attacking Nino. That's not kind. Yep, paladin, cavalier, nomad. Now, Nino can't actually move all the way out. Oh, if I hit Rebecca, move all the way up there. She could hit the guy who's using that, but that wouldn't be this turn. Wouldn't be this turn at all. Physics staff on Nino, since she's really too fragile still to get anything but full heals at all times. And again, this is with a Seraph Robe. If she hasn't gotten one of those, she's going to be at 25 HP, which is pretty dangerous. I'm still wondering how that unit is standing on the bank, though, right by where Hector is. Can he cross that river because he's a nomad? Do nomads have the ability to do that even though they're on horseback? Holy crap, they do. I think I need to kill him this turn. What can this guy attack then? Pretty much everywhere. Oh, she could insta give that paladin though. Mm, nomad is more important though. She just wouldn't be able to kill him. Oh, there we go, double attack. That's what I'm looking for. Two uses of fire. I'm going to have to rescue Nino out of there because she's not going to be able to stay within range of anyone that can attack at range, but I will have someone else take out this nomad here. In fact, it's going to be Lin with a bow. Those are some very strange arrows. They're, they're single white lines. Are they swords? Is she firing swords? That would be kind of excellent. Pretty impressive, the ability to fire swords. But I don't think that's the case, so... Now, I will have Guy go over here just so he can handle anyone that tries to come in the back door, but I don't think Ava's going to be doing that, because that just would not be a smart move on their part. We've got Urk and Matthew sitting back here, and they really don't have to worry about anything. Oh, but he can use a Recover Staff on Ninian. Good. Massive healing circle. And hopefully a lot of weapon level experience with that. Well, an amazing level up for one, but how much weapon level experience? Not much. He's going to have to be using that staff for quite a while. Damn. Alright, more knights, more generals. Bring them on. Everybody group up. Oh, I forgot to move Florina that turn. Oh well. She is defensive enough that she should be able to survive all of this simply through dodging, if not through anything else. Also, uh, earlier in the LP I said that ballistas don't use their shots if they miss, but after seeing what bolting spells do, I'm starting to think that they actually do, and maybe that's just a change to a later game? Or maybe that was never the case at all, I'm not entirely certain. But just know that ballista do waste their ammo if they miss, so that's a very important note. Huh. I gotta say though, this is the first time I've ever heard of the fact that rangers are able to cross rivers despite being a horseback unit. I mean, it makes sense, they're supposed to be the rugged wilderness explorer types, but 
even so, you never actually see a lot of that go into practice in the game itself. Hmm. But anyway. You know, I'm starting to think that this little segment near the bridge here is going to take up most of the level though, and we're already something like 30 minutes in, which is absolutely ludicrous, considering this is a, that this is probably going to take considerably longer. This is one of the longest levels in the game, simply due to the marathon nature of all the enemies that are coming in to try to kill you. Oh, Kanas can finally use that hammer near staff. Rebecca's long bow. Huh. It's been long enough that I've actually forgotten what that animation looked like. Wow, that gives a lot of experience to upgrade units. And again, I suppose with only three uses, it had better give quite a bit of experience. Now, where can he attack this turn, considering he can move over water? Oh, he could attack right there, or I could have Lin nearly kill him. Damn it, nearly. Not quite, though. Unless she lands a crit. What would Dart be able to do to him, though? Quite a bit, but that would put Dart at risk. Oh, if he attacked with a hand axe, though... 23 damage, 71% chance to hit. I'll take those odds. And if anybody attacks Dart now if with a ranged weapon, they're just going to be putting themselves at a disadvantage considering Hector and Oswin are completely unguarded. I could have someone try to rescue Dart, but I don't think... Okay, Priscilla can rescue him, being on a horse and whatnot, but that's pretty much all that Priscilla is going to be able to do. Nino is going to be able to take out this Javelin user with the Thunder Tome, good. Gives her a little bit of extra dodge chance, so we might not have to heal her this turn. Good, good. Then I can actually just use Dance on Nino and get her to attack again, get her another level. And with the amount of units here, I'm not going to just cut the video because this is actually going to be a bit more involved than just arena training, but I am going to speed this up, I think. So, time for a training montage. I'll see you all again in a minute. Alright, hey, we're not done with these enemies yet, but it is a red letter moment for Urk as she has just hit level- or Urk. Red letter level for Nino as she has just hit level 20, it's time to use the Guiding Ring and upgrade to Sage. Now, I'm still gonna have her killing most of these units because she still needs to catch up with everybody else in terms of levels, but she is officially powerful enough to take out just about any one of these enemies in a single barrage of attacks. Especially with the extra defense and resistance, as well as the HP, she is going to be one of the most trusted members of our squad. Without further ado, back to the fast forward, see you all when the enemies are dead. Alright, and welcome back, everyone over here is finally finished, it is turn, what is that? How many turns was that, 20 turns? But finally, Mino has turned into a badass, level 10 sage. Maxed out on speed, 23 magic, 25 skill, 21 luck, 23 resistance. She is an absolute beast of a character, and this is without any stat boost items either. She is doing this all naturally. Urk is an equivalent level, and we've had him for longer, and he has eh, sort of alright stats compared to her, but nowhere near that level all around. So, it's time to just go ahead and finish off the level. Now, this is really just, as I previously mentioned, a marathon stage. That is really the difficulty of it, is learning to manage the... what is that? Three separate waves of three enemies. So, nine enemies per fort is gonna be 27 enemies total per group of three forts. So, grand total of... wait, no. Three groups of three, so nine enemies, 27 total extra enemies coming out of here, plus everything that's already on the map, is going to be just a little bit dangerous. Urk is still going to be using up his recover staff to try to level up to rank B. I still can't believe I didn't realize that. I am going to have Kanas use a hammer knee staff on 
I think Urk's... Oh no, I'm not gonna have him use that on anything that Urk has... Or Urk! Nino! Urk is the other one. On anything that Nino has, simply because she really doesn't need him to. I'm gonna send Florina to take care of these Ballista, though, since they've been a bit of a thorn in my side. And I'm going to send Dart over to those shops so we can get some items before we head out of this level. Since, now that Nino's pretty much trained up, this level is just about over. Once you do get through that initial wave of enemies, things get considerably easier for you. As you can see, there's only just a small grouping surrounding Lloyd now. And he is going to be dangerous, but I think that Nino can be the one to handle him now. With just the sheer stats behind her. She, since his attack is going to be calculated off of resistance instead of physical attack, since he is going to be using the Light Brand, it is going to be that much easier. Uh, and again, make sure Florina has the Delphi Shield. If you send her out here, it's going to be a bit troublesome for you otherwise. What was I saying? Oh dear. I, lo I lost track of my train of thought while I was getting rid of it these enemies. Oh yes, uh, since the damage from the boss is going to be calculated using resistance rather than... Frickin' she moved. Moving him here would be alright though. Using resistance rather than physical damage, and since she has 23 resistance or something absolutely ridiculous like that, she will be able to take out the boss fairly easily, even though she can't land a single crit due to the special ability of the boss. Now, I will need to have Urk continue to heal people up. Him and Priscilla together, though, is going to make them that much more dangerous, as that Valkyrie-Sage combo with an A support is going to give them a lot of damage. So, uh, let's see if we can just charge straight through to the enemy fort now. Florina is going to be taking care of most of the enemies on this side of the map. Her Iron Sword is going to give her just enough dodge to get that most of the enemies will miss their attacks. So she's going to be getting a little bit more experience. Chances are she is going to be one of our vaulted level 20 units by the end of this playthrough. Her, Kanas, and honestly Nino probably are going to be the three of them that I can foresee hitting level 20 easily. Maybe Hector even. But it's just going to be a matter of who manages to take out the most units. And in that respect Nino's pretty much going to go unchallenged. There we go. And again, if you don't give Nino the proper experience in those first couple of levels where you find her, she's really going to have a lot of trouble, but if you can do something like I did in this level, and you can give her that chance to just attack the enemies completely at no risk to her, you will be able to have a pretty good unit. I am going to have Florina use a Silver Lance against this warrior here, since he doesn't have enough HP that an Iron Sword would be able to take him out, which is rather to be expected. At this point, I'd be happy if Florina can use a Killing Edge by the final level, because it's highly unlikely she's going to be able to use a Silver Sword. But, as for everybody else, Nino's just going to go ahead and charge ahead into battle. Minion can sort of follow her with her 7 movement speed. And everybody else is just going to chill out here. I do need to get over to that shop still, though. Can't forget about that. Luckily, Dart can cross both rivers and peaks, so it's going to be that much easier for him to get across there. And... Uh, I think that should just about do it here. We just need to make sure that Florina doesn't die, but she's got so much HP and so much dodge chance that unless all three enemies hit her at once, She's really not at any risk. Meanwhile, Nino, 31 damage with an Elfire Tome to a fighter. And that's with a 17% crit chance base. Oh my goodness, it's such a good unit. And the Aphis drops just make her an even better one. 5% extra chance for growth each level is a great thing to see at any point in the game. So, continuing to use that is to your benefit. A Hand Axe is going to land a shot, actually, so I might want to get her within range of a Physic Staff here. I do think Priscilla's nearby, so that shouldn't be too difficult. Yeah, Priscilla's definitely within range. Oh, is she just barely? I was actually closer than I thought it would be. Now, if I could somehow get Nino up to rank B with Stav, she would be able to reach further than pretty much anyone else on my team with them, but I don't think that's going to be a possibility, so... I'll just take what I can get. 
which in this case is Florina getting even more levels by attacking enemies who have a literally 0% hit chance. There is no chance whatsoever they're going to be able to land any damage on her, so long as she's got that sword and they've got a hand axe. Level 15 Falconite, not getting the best level ups with her as she's nearing her final levels here. Uh, but then again, she has maxed out on speed, so... Not too much that she can do in that respect. Then I'm just going to send Nina over to take out the final enemies, pretty much on her own. I'll send Hector nearby and Oswin, since they did quite well tanking. But nothing else really that I need to do. I'm actually going to put this Hammerny staff back in the convoy. Because I don't really see Kanas being able to use it very much. But he can use his Mend staff to get some extra weapon level with it. And soon enough he will be able to use that, those physics staves just like Urk. They're both at about halfway there. Oh well. Alright, so, this is why you want to keep Elowit near the back, tell me he's within movement range. You want to have him move over and talk to Vida, instead of actually attacking her. Now, since Vida did hear that we saved the prince, and you have to have Elowit or Lin talk to her, probably just Elowit, she joins your party. Our future, our hope, our future antagonist. Oh well. Now, Vida joins our team, but her two Black Fang members do not, since she was just traveling with them, evidently. And this is why you want to keep Lynn and probably Rebecca as well nearby. Them being bow users, they'll be ready to take out the enemies really easily. With bows, since they get so much bonus damage from attacking. Lynn finally gets some extra strength. Up to 14 strength at level 2 of an upgraded unit. It's alright. Well, no, it isn't. It's really kind of terrible, but for a unit that doesn't focus too much on physical attack as their primary stat, they focus more on dodge, like a swordmaster or, say, a blade lord. That's alright. Meanwhile, Guy is sitting at 17 strength at level 9, so I suppose I can't really begrudge Lin too much for that. And Dart is going to get across the mountains next turn, looks like. And Florina will continue getting that sword training. I need to remember to move Nino to attack that Berserker before he can reach her, though. It's going to be a little bit dangerous for her. If he does get within range for an attack before she does. Luckily, with Elfire, she really has just about nothing to worry about. 32 damage. Absolutely ridiculous. I realize they don't have much resistance, but even so, that's just, that's absolutely ludicrous how much damage she's dealing, and another level up, which might get her another point in magic. Oh no, but another point in skill. I think she maxes out at 28 on skill, so she's getting pretty close to that too. Now let's go ahead and heal up Nino, just so some archers don't surprise her and take her out. There we go. And that's the end of the turn, we have to rout the enemies to win this level, so we are just about done in that respect. Final use of an Elfire Tome go goes to good use, taking out that Black Fang ma mage, that Black Fang fighter, in a single hit. But I do have a couple of Black Fang snipers moving in, so I'm going to have to be careful about them. I'm just kidding, I'm just gonna move Nino in the middle of them and they're gonna throw themselves against her. Get insta-gib. Now, a couple of extra Weaver Knights will show up each turn that you have after Vida shows up, and Vida is a triggered event by moving past a certain little box here that I think is determined by these forts, truth be told. But, I can't be certain of that, so just keep someone nearby to take them out. And, looks like this round has some javelins, but if you have anyone with decent dodge chance, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Lin included. 
so long as they have bows, that is. Or if you have someone with an axe, they should be able to do fairly well as well, which is why I actually had Raven there for backup, since he was... Have, uh, since I did equip him with a steel axe, that is, at the beginning of this level. HP, speed, and luck is not a bad level up in the slightest. I can't really ask for too much more strength on Rebecca, considering she's nearly maxed already, but fully maxing out on strength would be a fairly nice touch. Now, there we go. Now let's go to the armory. What do they have for me? Silver items. That's actually really good. I'm going to buy a couple of those. Lots of silver swords, since I seem to have lots of sword users. There we go. Only two or three silver lances. And I'd say three silver axes. And one silver bow. Two. Two silver bows. I'm going to get a chance to buy more silver weapons later. And it might actually be in my be to my benefit to buy a couple of extra iron swords while I'm here, since I seem to be running out of those for the units in training on that. But I think that's going to be it for this shop. Now I'm just hoping that the next one has some magic items for me, since I am starting to run out of tomes for Nino. Guy is forced to use a killing edge to take out this sniper in a single turn, but that's fine, because a 62% crit chance is nothing to laugh at when it comes to a sword master, and he gets a level up off of it, hopefully some strength. Yes, good strength, speed, and defense. That's actually a great level up. And of course, HP is always a nice stat to have, but Swordmasters are one of the few units that can max out at a full 30 speed, so they can be absolute powerhouses when it comes to attacking quickly. Uh, but then again, Pegasus Knights come in at a close second, I think at 26 or 28 speed. She maxed out at 26, didn't she? I already looked at that. There we go. Even more strength for Florina. Good, that's a good level up. I don't think she's going to max out on strength this playthrough. It is 24, so yeah, she's not going to be able to, which is a pity, since that would be extremely useful, but I'll take what I can get. There we go. Nino gets a crit. No use wasting Thundertome uses. She doesn't have to, I guess. And she gets another level up, because that was evidently a pretty high-level sniper. Extra magic and luck, good, she's very nearly maxed out on magic now. Oh no wait, she can max out at either 28 or 30 on that, never mind. She's nowhere near maxed out. Hopefully by the end of the game. Considering she has Aphis drops, it seems possible, although not likely, that she's going to be able to. Uh, she's going to have one use left on that Thunder Tome. Yeah, that crit the first time would have been nice, since she would have had two uses left on that Thunder instead of one. But oh well, someone will not die on the first attack, and then we'll be able to die to Elfire after that. There we go, even more Weaver Knights. They will spawn for three or four turns after Vida appears, so keep that in mind. Uh, might as well use the last Thunder Tome use. Not a crit, pity. Oh well, a Thunder Tome broke. We are all very sad about that, and now, let's see what they have. They do have Elfire. Lightning, Shine, Flux. Okay, that's really... Not as good as I could have expected. You can also buy a door key if you want one. If you really need door keys, you can just pick them up here. Go ahead. If you don't, because you have, say, a thief or an assassin or one of the many lockpicks they've dropped over the course of the game, then you're fine. So, get some more Elfire Tomes. And that's pretty much all we're going to have to use for the rest of the game is Elfire Tomes. And I'll buy a two Thunders. Three Thunders for anyone that needs to attack a little bit faster and have a little bit extra crit chance. There we go! And that's pretty much the end of the level. Got- Oh, I forgot to- Hmm, that was dumb. Oh well. So these two Weaver Knights are now going to attack Elwood and Lynn, respectively. But they're the last Weaver Knights, so we really don't have to worry about them as much. Raven is going to take out the first one, who has a steel lance with his iron axe. Twelve percent, or twenty percent chance to do twelve damage means that he's just in no danger whatsoever. Really, at this point, once your units are leveled up this much, the only way that they do have any chance of killing you is doing by what is doing what they did with the uh, units from the forts in this level, which is just. Really? You spin the arrows and that gets you a crit? I would have thought that would have made it a bit harder to get it. You know what? Never mind. 
Oh god, I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> god. Um... What was I on about? It must have not been important. Forget it then. Then again, that could be said for about 90% of my commentary. But that's perfectly alright. Get a mend staff on Hector. Come on, the two of you. You're... Kanos, Urk, you're getting so close to rank B with... Oh, wow, level 16 Druid. And he has about as much magic as Urk. Urk Nino. Jeez, I keep confusing Urk for Nino for some reason. Or Nino for Urk, the other way around. Oh, well. Nino finally kills the enemy sniper. Lots more experience. Level up, now level 13 Sage. Skill and resistance up. She's almost maxed on skill. She's almost maxed on resistance. She's almost maxed on a lot of things. Again, Est power. Units like Est are going to be your friends. Oh, there might have actually been three units that were supposed to spawn each turn at this location, but Vida has been sitting on one of the spaces, so that really didn't work out too well. So I'm going to see if moving Vida off will allow more Weavers to spawn next turn, since they do seem to be fairly good experience for Raven, Lynn, Rebecca. There you go. Just sit there. Wait, what items did you come with, by the way? You came with a spear. That's it. Oh, wow. You really brought a lot to the table, didn't you? Hmm. Okay. Now, I am going to move Minion and Priscilla in. Priscilla for healing, Minion for an extra turn if, you know, needs it. And since the goal is just to rout the enemies, I don't need to have Elwood up there to seize the throne when all's said and done. 32 damage, no chance to survive. She probably would have attacked twice as well, considering the enemy is probably considerably slower than she is. In fact, the only one that I could see double attacking her, or at least not getting double attacked by her, is going to be the boss himself, Lloyd. And he won't move, naturally, so you can just kind of sit your units down here. Minion, I'm going to have sort of nearby, but not too close. And... Last Myrmidon comes out, can't do any damage, or at least can't hit to do damage. Nino lands a hit, and no level up off of that, since he was a fairly low level Myrmidon, but now it's just her and her adoptive brother. And yeah, she can actually, not only can she deal damage to him, she can't take any, so this is going to be the perfect fight for her. We'll just leave her to this. He's going to avenge his brother's death. Wait, seriously? That's it? Is there an actual talk command between the two of them? Because if that's the case, that's fairly ridiculous. Um, well here, I wonder if it does magic damage at point-blank range, or if it just has a magic ranged attack. Because if it does magic damage at point-blank range, then I can just send Nino in immediately. I won't even have to worry about it. Nope, does physical damage at point-blank range. Uh, so he could do 5 damage with a chance to crit, but she can talk to him, so I'll let him attack on his turn. They were Linus's enemies. Well, we... technically, we were, but that's because he thought the same thing you did, and then fought us, but we left him alive, and then Limstella killed him. It's all a big misunderstanding. Poor communication kills, people. Huh. But Lloyd actually just says, I'm bound to this course, I'm fated to die here. That's pretty dark, man, but uh, whatever you... Oh, say! He does move! Now, what the hell? Since when does he move? Oh, well, at least he can't do hardly any damage to Ninian because of her high resistance, but... Even so, why did, why did he... Oh, he's not on the throne anymore. That's going to be dangerous for him. Taking so much more damage from Nino now. And a level up. Extra one magic? Yep, even more damage. Uh, I can even have Ninian stay here too, because he's really not likely to kill her. But, of course, we can't hope for a lucky crit with Nino, since the boss has the Hoplon Guard, or whatever it's called in this game, the Iron Rune. A device that negates enemy critical attacks completely, no chance to land a crit on Lloyd. Meanwhile, he's a Swordmaster, so if you're not careful, he's go definitely going to have a chance to land one against you. But since their crit chance is lowered by one for every luck you have, and Nino has 23 luck, holy crap, she is going to be more than capable of just surviving this. I am going to have Priscilla heal up Ninian here, because if he does choose to attack her within melee range, things could actually be fairly dangerous for her. 
Luckily, because of her luck and because of her die high dodge, she's unlikely to die. Yeah, there we go. Just another light brand attack, and now Nina will be able to kill him this turn. Get all that sweet experience. And he is quite a tough enemy. So keep this in mind while you're attacking, but just have someone powerful enough to take him on, and you'll be good. And it looks like since Linus' is death, he just wanted to die himself. Which is admittedly rather sad, but hey, he stood in our way. He's got to go, man, and we get an Iron Rune, which is going to prevent critical hits against the unit of our choice. Best to give it to someone who's low on luck, who you don't want criticals to land on, but you can just choose whatever. Nino's fairly sad about the whole thing. She could care less about the rest of the Black Fang members that she just tore through, but... Oh, and Athos apparently just teleports in. I warped in, you know? That's all. Just, I warped in. It's fine. I was watching you. A very valid question. A completely valid question. Why didn't you just do that? What do you... Okay, so if he'd warped us straight here, then we wouldn't have had the training, we wouldn't have Nino, we wouldn't be as tough as we are. Bramimond. One of the eight legends. Oh, and Bramimond's a weird one. A legendary item. Cool. Let's go ahead and get it. And Bramimond is the only one that's capable of getting, capable of getting the seals off the weapons. So we just need to go see him. For which, we're teleported underground. Bremimond is a bit weird. He's kind of a blank. And I mean that in terms of, like, a character archetype. He is a blank. He reflects what's in front of him. The attitude of whoever's asking. It... Elwood talks to him, he's courteous. Lynn talks to him, he's courteous. Hector talks to him, he's angry. It keeps changing. Bremelond has no self. He, she, it is a mirror of the person addressing it. There you go. And apparently we're stronger than most. And apparently that's it. Grab on to remove the seals. It's fine. Big light over the world map. And it was actually the world map. It had the names written on it, written on it everything. Wait. You don't think the names are actually written on the continents, do you? I mean, I wouldn't think that, but a light just shone out from that point on the physical map of the world with all the names that we've been looking at. That that would be extremely silly. That still it'd be extremely easy to name places. Here's someone, fly up into the sky on a Pegasus and tell us what this place is named. There we go. Well, the seals have been broken, and Nurgle knows, because Nurgle's ridiculously powerful, and... wait, what? Oh, and he shows up! Literally right then, he's got a boss ticket on, too. That took him not very much time, actually, to be healed. And he wants them to come with to heal the Dragon's Gate, so it's time to fight! Two upgraded lords and Elwood versus a single enemy. Where's Nino? Now, Ninian gives her power back to Nils, same thing that happened before, when he gave it to her, and then she just goes with Nurgle, because she knows that he would kill us otherwise. Athos tells everyone to get down, since Nurgle just exploded. <laughs> Nurgle, you self-destruct. Everybody passed out. Elwood whited out. Elwood lost 
No gold. Oh, okay, so it was only Elwood and Nils, actually. Oh, there you go. If you want to save Ninian, Nurgle's weakness is in the sacred weapon. Well, we've got to go get it then. We unlock the seal, we may as well go collect the new sacred blade. Let's go to Ostia and take possession of Roland's sword. Before you go, take... I haven't seal. Yep. Elwood hasn't been able to use him thus far. If you tried, it doesn't work. And... Elwood gets an automatic class change at the end of this level. So make sure he's level 20 if you haven't trained him up yet. 31 HP and no horse goes to... A horse and considerably more stats. Finally, Elwood upgrades and gets a decent bonus to strength, defense, and resistance, and he can now use spears, which is fairly useless since you're going to be using swords with him most of the time. Congratulations, Elwood, you're the last one of us to finally be able to use one. Well, there you go. So, we will defeat Nurgle and rescue Ninian, blah blah blah, but all of that is going to be next time on Let's Play Fire Emblem. See you all then!